we're just after spending about an hour here in this field. There's about five acres in this field where the cows is at the minute. They're not finished off grazing it, but that end where the cows are is nice and dry. It's much drier than this side, and it's not poached at all. It doesn't need any attention. But here was very, very badly poached. Um, cows walking up towards that gap in the corner and really, really wet. Um, late on last year and I suppose some of you would have seen that video if you look back for springing his cows into this very field and you see how deep they were sinking in on the feet and it was just purely the time of year had come. The first pass ripped up the grass, the old dead weedy yellow grass that's down underneath, some people call it thatch. It didn't rip up any sods at all and I was very surprised the way it leveled it in. So on the first pass I run it more or less just to rip the ground up, just to open the ground up. Second pass was when I was sowing it. I sowed it with the second pass because I wanted to get a bit of soil um, ripped up and moving. Then when I came across at least had something to cover the seed over. That worked its treat. I went over and other parts over here, the whole way over this field. Much drier over there but the amount of old yellow dead grass it ripped out was simply incredible. So it's bound to make a great job of this field. What I'm going to do now is I'm leaving it till the cows have done. They've one more grazing here and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to roll it first and then I'm going to slurry it and then I'm going to put fertilizer on it. It should make a really good job of this field. Uh, it's a super little bit of kit. The cows are checking it out here now. Covered now in cow dung. That's the only fault. We'll have to probably run the hose in it because there's nothing like cow dung to take nice fresh paint off. Yeah, so I'm just on load number three. That tank is getting thicker than I'd like um, but it's a tank that was very full and I need to take a few tanks out of it so I can put water into it to mix it so it's not ideal definitely not probably ideal but I'm going very fast across the field and um, trying not to put it on too heavy um, but it seems to be every load I take out of it the thicker it gets. The first load was great, the second load wasn't too bad, the third load a little thicker than I'd like but it'll still be grand, not be an issue. Um, the hydraulic changeover, a lot of people just ask about that hydraulic changeover. I can use my spool valve to change from fill, neutral to spread. It's great, brilliant. You just have to be careful when you go to the yard and you move your spool valve. Because let's just say, my mate Dave told me, we all have a mate called Dave, he told me that he went into the yard a few times, pump running, he moved the wrong lever and he sprayed the entire yard with slurry. Did you imagine that happening? Apparently Dave has done that a few times. Off. It definitely does. 
stop the idle to get that sore set. Yep, so just checking the CF mission. So we're properly set and have. The gear is right, we go. So another people might say is this is not a problem putting fair laser straight on top of slurry. No, never had a problem with that. But rain's coming now in the next hour, hopefully. And wash it all in fairly quick so and it's not giving any rain then for a couple of days after that so it's time now to get any fertilizer you want to get out out looks like we have our sentence fairly accurate because judging by what i've left I'm about a bag and a half left at the moment here on the sower it's great when you get to know your own sower that's it's just brilliant you get to know the settings on it and with my feet then you feel confident enough that you're kind of close to what you want to put on and there is an app for them amazon sowers that you can work out I don't bother with that, I kind of judge it by trial and error and learn that way. Now Farmhand, um, it's a company I never really heard tell of until I started YouTube. They um, contacted me about a month ago to offer me a new spreader to demo out for a few days. A new Amazon spreader, has GPS and a load of stuff built into it. I was going to do it at the beginning and then I kind of changed my mind and turned it down then in the end for a little while because I was going to be sowing my silage ground with it. I just didn't want to risk doing it wrong. Another thing is, I kind of was only getting it for a few days, and for me to kind of review or demo out a machine, I nearly want it for a month. And this sewer that I have at the moment, um, I really like. It spreads really, really even, and I've had it a long time now. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, and I will say, is having to get out never out the last of the fertilizer, say the last bag in the bottom. Um, I'm just after doing that actually there now a few minutes ago, and don't like having to do that. If you are sowing fertilizer all day, no matter how many times I fill it, if I'm going to be emptying that sower, I have to get out. I always have to get out and even the two sides out so that I can finish off the field nice and level. But other than that, I have to say, would I buy one again? Yeah, I would buy another Amazon, yeah. There's loads of other good sowers as well. I've had an Abbey before, a Wagtail, um, and I've had a Vicon, all great sowers. I went off the Wagtail, we had a spinner force, then we went to Wagtail, then we were back to spinner again and do you know something? I much prefer the spinner. I just think you get a much, much better spread and I'd never go back to the Wagtail after that. So there's five acres in this field and I suppose from that first drinker, maybe between that first drinker and second drinker, we run the springtime hour on this side. You see an ESB pole over there? We didn't do anything on the far side, so that's what we've done. This was the side that was rough, especially around here. Now place that I didn't run with the harrow, you can see how rough it is. Just this wee dot here, quite rough. Now, don't mind the colour of the field, that's slurry. It might, I know by looking at the camera here in front of me, it looks like the field's ploughed out of it. It's not, it's slurry. But a lot of the poaching is gone. Uh, it may not look like that on the on the camera, but a lot of it is gone. It has filled in an awful lot of the poaching. Now there's seed in the ground as well. That slurry down on top of that and the fertiliser coming on top of that should make a good job of it. If we can get the weather now and a bit of rain and a bit of heat. As I said before, I am really impressed with that springtime harrow. Loads of other YouTubers even contacted me, told me they were interested in getting one for themselves. It's a big investment, yes, but can grow grass for you and make your swords ticking up, which I hope it will do for hours. I think that's water that pays for itself in a very short period of time because I said before if you want to make any kind of profit out of farming one thing you do have to make sure you're doing is yeah managing your grassland properly Next little job we're going to tackle, something that has to be fixed and has to be addressed because a simple problem could turn into a quite a big one, quite a dangerous one, in no matter of time. So before you ask, my trailer, I'm just after tipping it up here now. I'm not going under it, I'm not going near it. It's just so I can show you guys, without it being too dark, what it is I'm going to be replacing. But you see, the ram goes up there and goes up to a pin and same down here. Walk around, don't worry, I'm not under the trailer and it goes in there. Well, them two pins are very, very badly twisted and on the point of breaking. And if you were tipping a load up and that pin broke, and that would be a pretty bad hop. It could even wreck the trailer. Uh, pretty dangerous as well. So I've got two pins for it. 
you might think it's an easy job to do, but because the twist is on it, it's not gonna be easy. But I know from experience, this is going to be probably a pain in the ass, something I have to do, so. Let's get it done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this trailer back down. I'm going to put a couple of wedges here to keep the trailer slightly up in the air so I can get in underneath we have more comfortably. Um, so I'm going to put something, a couple of planks across here to keep the trailer up in the air and then we get working on it. What's wrong with you? What do you want? What's wrong with you? What's wrong? I'm working on the trailer. Can I see him? What do you want? Can I get 10 minutes, please? And the more I ignore them, the more they will look for attention. And if I pet her, he starts to bark. Hold up, see? So he's telling me not to pet her. You know, are you happy? No. Right. Okay, that moved it. say it wouldn't be easy. Usually when the jacket comes off and the blowtorch comes out, it normally means we're at the second stage. Now we're motoring. All right, so after 30 minutes of battering, we have the pin out. But what I need to do now is I need to put this down to the right size. I need to weld a washer here on this end and fit it through and fit a bolt on this side. It's too long at the minute. The shorter it is, the better. And that's what we're gonna do now. Another thing that gets asked hugely in our channel, I've said it before, but I keep getting messages and messages and messages about it, is our welder. Um, this is a Jefferson 160 um, inverter welder. I bought this in one of my local co-ops, McCabe Speeds, which is based in Canningstown in County Cavan. I'll put a link in the description to where their place is and you can go online. They have an online shop and they, I think they do deliver. Yes, they deliver to your door, so um, you can go and check them out and uh, you'll see that welder on their website. But I cannot recommend that welder enough you would have seen it if you've been watching this channel from the beginning i absolutely love it look at the size of it lays a feather you can bring it anywhere with you and it's got piles of power to do anything you want All right, so this pin is really fighting me. I thought it would have been the easy one to get out because it's a small end, but it's so badly bent. I don't know if you can see it there, the camera's pretty hard to show, but it's so badly bent. Uh, it just will not come out. I'm battling and battling at it. So I'm hoping that if I cut off this washer on this side, um, that I can hammer it through from this side. After that, I don't know what I'm gonna do it. <laughs> See, I can't get in with the iron grinder to cut this off flush. So what I'm doing at the minute is I'm trying to cut it at several sections, hit it with a chisel, and hopefully break them off that way. Not to cut into the steel behind when I'm doing it. One disadvantage to using battery tools, they are very, very handy, but the batteries wear out really fast. There's a the chunk gone. All right, so you know we're getting desperate when the drill comes out. Bottom at it, I've actually put a ratchet strap on a two to pull the ram together. 
nothing would help. And that pin's actually loose. You can move it with your hand, but there's a lip inside there because it's bent so badly and probably worn so much into the pin that it will not pass. So I'm normally a reluctant person to give in, but I think I could be really defeated on this one. I really don't know what to do with it. So I haven't got much room here, but a couple of you are gonna ask how I got that out after all the struggling I did. Well, let's be clear. It was a struggle. There was a lot of unpleasant words said between the process of getting that pin out and starting a job in the first place. I was actually regretting that I started at all, but I knew it had to be done. It was something that was incredibly unsafe and hadn't been done in quite a while. It's normal for them pins to wear, something you kind of have to keep an eye on. I knew they were kind of starting to bend this last while and bend pretty quickly. I'll give you an idea what the pin looked like. Here's got the bend this on that. You see these gouges here? Over here to the light, you better. You see them gouges? Well, that there is where between the the ram and the pin itself. You can see the wire that was there, so it wasn't long before that was gonna break. And same on this side, that's not cut, that's pure wire. So they were in bad shape. There was time to get them changed. There's the bottom one. It wasn't just as bad, but you can see again, you can see the wire that's there. And the same on the far side, and you see the hoop that's on it too. So how did they get it out? Well, I rung a friend of mine who does my mechanic work, and I said to him, hey, I'm having torture with this job. Any ideas how I can get this pin out? Um, probably if I had had it, Use the bottles, get her heated up, fire out that way. Yeah, probably would have worked. But I had that ratchet strap on that ram and I had it pulled together as much as I could pull it together. The pin was moving, so there was no pressure on the ram. Well, so I thought there wasn't. Um, so my own man said he'd call around after work this evening. He was already busy. I didn't want to have to take him away from his work, but he said he'd call around. He's a great lad. He always helps me when I want any help at all. It's great to have friends like that. But he said he'd call around. But just in the meantime, I said I'd have one more go at it. And what I did was, I removed the pin here. I took, dropped the ram onto the ground. It left that had more access to the pin. My idea was I was gonna run an iron grinder in here and cut this pin off in the inside, um, which probably would have helped. But what I did do was, I welded on a piece of steel onto that. I run it out through that gap that was just on the outside of the, of the trailer that I could get one hell of a whack at it with the sledgehammer. And that one big massive whack, and it just popped out. Lesson to be learned, if something's not working out, just use a bigger hammer. So one final thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to grease up the bearings. So that's that. She needs a good power washing down now to get all that old green algae off her. And um, just been sitting up over the winter time, but she's a good, solid, tidy trailer. And as I said before, that trailer has done a lot of work, has moved a lot of heavy, heavy material, and it has never, ever let me down. That's the first time I've ever took the welder to it, just to fix that little crack there. And now it's fixed good as new. So it's worth taking the time just to check things over. I have a couple of little chains I notice here. I'm just going to actually weld a couple of new chains on here. Um, because a couple of them have just little cable ties and bits of wire tied on them, so I'm just going to put on new chains onto them, probably put on new clips as well, just to tidy that up. It's crying out for a coat of paint, and that's what it really needs. Once these things sit outside, look, at, eventually they're going to get like this. When it's actually washed, it looks a lot better, but sometime it is on my books to get this whole trailer sandblasted and get it properly repainted with a good paint and it'll last me another 20 years. If I was buying that trailer again, one thing I would change 
would be not to buy the double tyres. I had that option to go with super singles and go with the, or go with the doubles. I went with the doubles at the time. It meant if you had a puncher on the road, you were carrying a load of fertiliser or something, you always had that second tyre to get you home. That was kind of in theory what my idea of thinking was that time. Now, if I was to do it again, super singles all the way. Um, I would love to see a super set of super singles on that trail. Off. They're probably never going to go on it, but that's what I would put on. If you're ever all on a trail like that to be built, super singles is the way to go. So that's it for today's video. I think I've enough fitted in there for one video. Um, lots happening now. We're really busy. Our tanker is sitting down there with a brand new set of wheels just after being put on it yesterday. So that's going to be coming up in the next video. Awesome. They look, just look the part that they do. Um, Gary again came from McManus Tires. We'll go through all that in the next video, but it's exciting stuff. Lots is happening. This clay hopefully will be moving. That's why I'm working on this trailer because Jerry on the digger will be back and he will be going through getting rid of all that clay up there, getting this whole garden into shape around my parents' house, getting that field all reseeded and riz up. Plenty of work to be done. Let me hopefully get back to our series on the wee Fergie. We have done quite a bit of work on it. I'm not going to show you just yet. You've seen enough. But we have done a lot of work on it since the last time you've seen it. So them series will be going up. It's just a matter of me sitting down and getting the time to edit these things because I'm working quite late hours at the minute. But things will calm down because I'm hoping that we're going to get rain and the grass will start growing so we can get these cows out at night because they're in far too long now at night. And we're into May. This is a bank holiday weekend coming now. So it's time for cows to be out full time. My petrol yard script that I mentioned in the last video, a lot of people ask me what's wrong with it. Well, I'm just literally after getting off the phone from Clark's in Cavan. I left it over there. It's been over there three times before in its lifetime with the same problem of letting water into the engine. It costs a lot of money to repair. It's probably better off putting a brand new engine in it. The unfortunate thing about a brand new engine, they can't get one until August. Now, I am kind of getting to the end of using it, but I still would love to have it. There still are cows in there that has to calve, and I'd love to have it because back that bit of silage and get things done a wee bit easier. So I have a decision to make. Do I wait it out? and put a brand new engine in it, or do I buy a brand new one? The engine's gonna take to August, the brand new one I can have tomorrow. The brand new one's gonna cost twice the price of putting an engine into the one I have, but the one I have has about eight years work done. I just don't know, I don't know. I'm a really, I'm annoyed about it because I fully believe that an engine, regardless what brand it is, especially being a Honda, should not let water into the engine. Simple as that. But anyway, that's for another video. We'll give you an update on what happens there. Anyway, folks, till the next video. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that sub button if you like what you see. Give us a like. Leave a comment down below. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that usual stuff. Until the next one, folks, talk to you again.